My name is Dennis Wright, and in 1989 I wrote this book, The Time Illusion. In the same year, physicist Stephen Hawking published A Brief History of Time. The major difference between the two books is that Hawking spoke of arrows of time and stated that time travel was impossible. Time was a one-way flow. The Time Illusion, on the other hand, described a Minkowski four-dimensional universe where all time, past, present and future, exist simultaneously. In 1992, I wrote to Professor Hawking and explained my concept. In return, I received a letter from his secretary assuring him that although Stephen was unable to personally write a response, he appreciated my thoughts and would consider the matter. I felt vindicated in 1995 when the newspaper report advised that Stephen Hawking had made a complete about-face and was urging the British government to investigate the possibility of time travel. I felt vindicated in 1995 when this newspaper article appeared in a local paper. Now, 15 years later, Stephen Hawking and his co-author, physicist Leonard Lodenow, in their 2010 book, The Grand Design, describe a concept in their end theory that concludes, everything and every time exist simultaneously. Twenty-one years after the time illusion was published, renowned physicist Stephen Hawking has now agreed with the concept that I published in 1989 that all time occurs in a single instant. This means that time travel, prophecy and predictions are all possible, but raises the question, how can everything exist at once? We perceive time as a one-way flow, only because we learn and recall things consecutively. It does pose the question, how can the past, present and future occupy the same place? This is only possible because every moment in time is different to every other moment in time. And the only way for this to occur is for time to accelerate. Let me demonstrate with a timeline. We start with the Big Bang. Draw a timeline through to, we hope, infinity. Today we believe the universe to be about 14 billion years old. When the universe was 7 billion years old, time was travelling only half as fast as it does today. So one second or one year was twice as long as it is today. So if we take the 7 by 2, we will find that at that time, the universe was already 14 billion years old. As a matter of fact, the very first second of time took 14 billion years. No wonder the universe expanded so rapidly in its very early stages. Now, when the universe is tw twice its present age, at 28 billion, time will be travelling twice as fast. So the world will still only be, in effect, 14 billion years old. It will always be the same age. The work of Max Planck in quantum physics explains why we can only see the present moment. We're not moving fast enough in time to be able to see the future, or slow enough to see the past. The next question is, why would time accelerate? The answer to this is found in the work of Newton and Einstein. Newton discovered that the way that gravity acts, and Einstein established that gravity affects the passage of time. According to Newton, gravity is equal to the mass and inversely proportional to the square of the distance. 
sounds complicated, but it simply means that as we move away from an object, its gravity becomes weaker, and it becomes weaker twice as quickly as the distance increases. We can see an example of this when we compare the Earth and the Moon. The Earth is 81 times more massive than the Moon, but does not have 81 times the gravity. The Earth has a radius 3.666 times larger than the Moon, and as gravity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance, we must divide 81 by 3.666 squared, or 13.44. Thus we find that the Earth's gravity is six times greater than the Moon's. Just as size makes a difference to the Earth and the Moon, so too it makes a difference when we consider the entire universe. The early universe was far denser, and so its gravitational field was far more powerful. As it expands, the distance from the centre of gravity increases, and its gravitational field becomes weaker. Einstein explained that both velocity and gravity affect the rate at which time passes, a fact that is continually proved by the need to regulate clocks and satellites to compensate for the greater distance from the centre of gravity. So, as our universe expands, and its gravitational field weakens, time accelerates. The result of all these changes is that when we look at distant galaxies, they appear to contain more mass than we can perceive, and so we assume they contain large quantities of dark matter. When we measure the expansion of the universe, it appears to be accelerating due to mysterious dark energy. But this is an illusion because the units by which we measure time are getting smaller as time accelerates. Read my latest book, Physics Guide and the End of the World, for a full explanation and even more amazing discoveries.